Hi everyone, I just wanted to do a quick video just to introduce this week's exercises and to show you a couple of different ways that you can go about doing this. So um, this is the uh, Neuroscience for Machine Learners website and if you scroll down to week one you can see here we've got exercises and there's a couple of options here you can preview the notebook or you can open it in CoLab. I'm just going to quickly show you what happens first if you hit preview notebook. Um, it opens up the exercises repository on GitHub, which you can check out and use locally. Um, and, and, and here's the, here's that. You can take a look at that. Um, and if you check it out locally, there, uh, are, I've got it open here, for example, in VS code, um, you'll get a copy of the repository that looks like this. And there's some, uh, instructions for how to do a local install of Python here. Um, so you can just follow that. Uh, and then you can, um, it's a, it's a Jupyter notebook. So you can, you know, click cells here, um, and sort of press play to run them, uh, edit them, see the output and so on. Okay. So, so that's using, uh, VS code and Jupyter notebooks. The other option that you have is to open it in Google Colab, which will handle basically all of the install and everything for you. So let's just take a quick look at what happens if you do that. So I open this in. Google Colab. And here you can see immediately, um, I have a copy of the, um, of the notebook open and I can just start editing and running these cells straight away. And everything is just going to just work because I've tested it already. Okay. So with that said, and that'll be the same for future weeks with that said, um, now let's have a quick look, uh, at, at this particular, um, week's exercises. So there's two parts. Um, in part one, the idea is basically to just take the, um, the theory that you've learned about uh, leaky integrated and fire neuron and to code your own simulation of it. Um, and to do that, uh, you do it in Python and there's some implementation steps here. So basically what you want to do is you want to write some code that looks like this algorithm here. And here I've written a, a sort of function template that you basically just have to fill in the gap here, right? Um, everything else is written for you. Once you've written the code that does that simulation, you can run this cell and the results should look like this if you've got it right. Okay. So that's part one. Uh, and I think that should probably take something like, um, 30 to 40 minutes to, to complete that. All right. In part two, we've got a much more open-ended exercise, which is kind of more like a, a, a real world sort of, uh, research situation, which is I'm giving you some data. Uh, and I've also given you the code to load all of that data. So you just need to run this cell and here's a plot of what this data looks like. Now in this data, you have a, a series of input currents represented in orange. So there's 10 repeats with different currents and you've got recorded traces and spike times of a neuron responding to those currents. And you can think of this as if it were real data. It's actually generated by a more complicated model, but you can think of it as real data. Uh, and your aim is to come up with a simple abstract model that can approximate uh, or, or fit this data. And this is a, a real contest that was run by the INCF, uh, the International Neuroinformatics uh, Coordinating Facility, I think, in 2009. Um, I entered that and I think I came second, um, which is uh, obviously very annoying. But uh, yeah, because otherwise I would have got the prize if I come first and there was a money prize attached to it. All right. So um, that's the game here is you want to try and fit this as well as you can. What I've done uh, is to implement a distance metric between the spike times. So basically your model should produce a set of spike times. Uh, you've got the spike times from the data. And in this case, I'm using what's called the, the Van Rossum spike train metric distance between the, between the spike trains. So this will uh, compute that uh, given, given your code. Um, and here we go, here's a, here's a plot. In this case, I've just taken a leaky integrated file with, with just some sort of default parameters. And you can see it's sort of fitting some of the spikes. This, the blue one is produced by the model and the orange is produced by the, is produced by the more complicated model that you're trying to fit to. Uh, it's not doing a terribly, totally bad job. You can see some of the spikes are happening at the same time, but it's also not doing a very good job. So this is the distance and it's the return it's the value returned by this eval lif function and if this is zero you've got a perfect fit and basically the smaller this number is the better uh, and the second part of the exercise is basically just just do whatever you can to do to get the lowest uh, possible number here the best possible fit 
uh, to this data. And there's all sorts of ways you could do that. You can just try and do it by hand. There's not so many parameters. You might be able to, to get lucky with that. Or you can try a global optimization package. For example, there's the uh, CMA ES um, package, which is quite easy to install in Python like this. Um, or whatever you want, whatever you think is, a, is an appropriate way to try and uh, to do this fitting. Uh, and for those who are attending in person, um, when we've when you've had it when we finish this at the end of the class, um, everyone's going to sort of call out their their best number that they got to, and the the one with the the, the best um, can show their solution to the rest. All right, great. Well, I hope you enjoy the exercise. Um, and for those who are online, please feel free to chat about it and discuss it. But please don't uh, don't give too many solutions to everyone else because it ru ruins the fun for everyone. Great. All right. Thank you very much.